Hello again, Spooks fans, and welcome to another exciting installment of... What is this again? Oh yeah, The Mask Fanatic. For all you mask fanatics where we look at interesting old Halloween masks. Now, let me just preface this by saying tonight's mask is probably really only of interest to people who know me personally. If you don't know me personally, you probably should go find something else to do for the next seven or eight minutes. But uh, if you do know me personally, you might find this interesting. And I'm not going to start doing this every week, I promise. I'm only doing it this week because more than one person has asked and suggested that I do it and so forth and so on. And the question that the humans ask me at a steadily diminishing rate is, what was the first mask that I, Dr. Lady, ever made? Okay, because I made a lot of masks. Not the ones I talk about on here. The ones I talk about in the attic and on the, the You Creepy Cheapy segments are made by other people, such as good artists and, and big uh, companies and uh, legitimate studios. But I have made a lot of masks on my own. And the first one I ever made is from way back in 1985. Holy mackerel. 1985. And I'm reaching up there, but I meant to reach down here. My first latex mask ever created by me was this guy, Grunch. His full name was the Great Green Grunch of Grim Bindelzich. And when I made him, yeah, I know, it's not a very good sculpture. Come on, come on, I was young, it's my first time. I'm, I'm opening up to you here. You could afford to, you know, uh, have a little sympathy and, you know, show a little support here, couldn't you? Sure. Uh, Grunch here, my first attempt. And when I say my first attempt, what I mean was he was not my first attempt. He was my first successfully uh, cast and, and uh, molded latex mask. Before this, when I was younger, I had tried, when I was a kid, I made masks out of paper mache and clay and, you know, anything I could find. I tried making masks, but the first one that I ever made in legitimate good quality latex rubber, like you see here, and pulled it out of a plaster mold like a professional, was Grunch, a.k.a. the Great Green Grunch of Grim Bindelvich. Now, Grunch uh, was actually named by my friend Chris Stryker, and at the time, uh, Stryker was the one who kind of got me into mask making because he collected them too, and he knew that I collected them, and I, I, I had a bedroom full of uh, rubber monster masks when I was a kid, and Stryker finally persuaded me to put my hand in it and said, you know, he told me, you're, you're, you're an artist, you draw monsters, you know everything about masks, why don't you try making? And I was like, eh, because you got to remember, this was a million years ago, and you couldn't, like, go to mask making school or anything like that. Uh, like you can today. Today it's easy to learn this stuff. Back then we had to figure it out for ourselves, which means screwing up a lot. So uh, that's why I said this was the first successful attempt at making a latex mask by me. But anyway, Stryker sort of talked me into trying it, and this was the first result from 1985, good old Grunch. I had, I think, three molds on this back then, long since gone, long since gone. Uh, but I did have three molds on this back of the day, and I believe I made around a hundred of these all together. And every single one of them had a fabric hood sewn and, and made specially for him by Laura, who uh, was, uh, you know, my, my girlfriend at the time. And, uh, the, well, I said every single one. Every single one that had a hood, had a hood made by Laura. There were a few that uh, never got finished. I don't even remember how that happened. But there are a few copies out there that are just like face masks with an elastic strap on the back. Now, uh, the great green grunch of Grim Bindelzich here was, uh, was only green uh, most of the time, not 100% of the time. Sometimes I use different colors of green. And look at this, I've got two of them. Slightly different colors, as you can see. Sometimes a little more realistic olivey green, sometimes a little more Halloweeny green. Uh, actually, this this paint scheme was my favorite. And then occasionally I did even sillier things, such as purple. So um, this is a purple one that was at uh, Stryker's house for you know 500 years, and then recently turned up. And as you can see, it never got the uh, the hood put on. But it does have an elastic strap at the back, and it does have my name inside, and it says 1985. Can you see that? It doesn't matter if you can see it. Trust me, it's there. You don't care anyway, I know. But Grunch was my first attempt at uh, a honest-to-goodness quality latex mask. And uh, as you can see, the purple one is pretty beat these days. And 
I don't mean beat color, I mean like beat up, although it's rather the color of a beat too, isn't it? I suppose. But anyway, uh, it's, it's, it's rather beat up and it's seriously in need of some repaint uh, work and some touch-up work, but you'll have that when you're as old as old grunge. I don't know what I was thinking when I sculpted him. I don't think I had anything in particular in mind as far as whether he was an alien or a demonic entity or what he was, although I kind of think that I was kind of thinking of uh, sword and sorcery kind of uh, characters like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, Conan the Barbarian, uh, that sort of uh, a, a fantasy demon, let's say, is, is probably what I had in mind with Grunch, aka the great green Grunch of Grim Bindleswitch, who was usually green, but a few copies were purple, and there were even a few that I did in light brown. Now, uh, there were enough of these that there may still be some in good shape because I'm always surprised to see how many of my masks from back then survived to today in fairly decent condition. This one is not, obviously not brand new. He's got some cracking between the eyes there where a lot of masks start to go. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can patch that. I'll work on that. Try to preserve uh, Grunch here. The other one is, is pretty much perfect. This one looks like it was poured yesterday. I don't know. Sometimes they wear out faster than others. It's uh, one of the great mysteries of the world of masks. But uh, if anybody asks you what was the first mask Dr. Lady ever made himself, you'll know it was Grunch. Counting only latex masks because as I mentioned earlier, I did uh, work on some paper mache masks and stuff like that prior to this, but Grunch was my first latex creation. I know, I know, quit, quit finding fault with it. I was young and inexperienced and had no training and just had a, you know, doodle with clay basically to come up with him. So that's the story of Grunch, my first mask. And uh, next week we'll go back to talking about masks from other people who are more important than me. Really, we will. So join us again here in the attic next week and watch out for old Grunch.